Howdy gang and welcome back to Pool School. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to clear a hard to reach pump impeller. So what do you say we get right to it? Alrighty, before we get started, I want to thank you once again for watching, remind you to like this video if you do, subscribe to my channel if you've not done so already, and please share my channel with everyone you know who has a pool. Okay, so your pump or your pool is having a tough time moving water, all right? So often, obviously, uh, it can be uh, the filter needs to be cleaned out, or it could be your pump basket needs to be cleared out, but sometimes it can be due to a clogged impeller. Now, I did a video on clearing a clogged impeller, but this one is clearing a hard to reach clogged impeller, and I'm gonna show you the little tool that everybody should have and everybody probably does have around their house um, to get to it and clear it should you need to. Some of them are a little hard to reach, and I'm gonna show you one like that today. But what happens is the impeller is basically inside the pump, all right? It's be, it sits behind the pump basket, all right? And what it does, it's kind of like an inside impeller, okay? Or it's an inside propeller. It, start, it creates the suction that pulls the water from the pool and then pushes it, forces it through the filter and then back into the pool. So if your impeller gets clogged, that's one of the biggest reasons why you will have suction issues and your pressure will drop. Now there's other issues, but we're talking about the possibility that your impeller is clogged, okay? And it's pretty easy to clear if you can reach it, but some pumps have a very deep throat and it's very hard to get your fingers in there to clear it. So I have a little gizmo that everybody has, I'm sure you do, that is gonna help you clear that. So let's go to a house and let's check it out. Alrighty, so as not to keep you in suspense any longer, the item that you will be using to reach a hard to reach impeller is this little thing right here. Yep, just a toothbrush, okay? You don't have to go out and buy one. Just take one of your old toothbrushes and grab that. I like ones that are curved, but they help you to reach in there without getting your fingers in there or if your fingers aren't long enough to get in there. But some people also have a little bit of a fear sticking their fingers into a pump motor. I get it because they're concerned it might turn on even when they've put all the precautions in place. So let's take this and let's get to work. Okay, so this is one of my client's pools and if you notice, their pump configuration, and again, just really briefly to go over details, this is where the suction comes from the pool, goes into the pump here, right inside here is where the impeller is. So that impeller pulls water from the pool through the pump up through this pipe and forces it through the filter and out. Okay, so that's pretty much how it works. And again, this one has such a deep throat in here that that impeller is right here at the end of this, and it's really hard to reach with your fingers. And again, some people have a, a fear of putting their fingers in something like that where it might start up, even if you've taken all the precautions to not let it start up. So I get that, and you can use the toothbrush to help. Now, these have most of these have a band that you can take apart and that's to clean the impeller and also to do the shaft seal and stuff and, and, and O-rings. But normally you would unscrew this, take this whole piece off and these two pieces would separate. Then you could get in there and clear the impeller. The reason I don't like doing that, number one is it's a pain, it really is. And also when you take this apart, inside this big part right here, around this entire inside is a big kind of o-ring and it's the 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 material the rubber material is kind of square shaped sometimes and then inside here where it pulls out is another o-ring and the thing that is a pain about these when they pull them apart is you've got to make sure that those o-rings stay seated in their place and that you fit them back in correctly honestly i think i don't care for these pumps very much because of the configuration. I think it's just a, um, a poor design, but that's unfortunately you have to deal with. And so you can't get to it. Now, again, the way they make it so you can get to it is you have to unscrew this band and put it all, take it apart, put it all back together, make sure it all fits completely right. And honestly, it's just a pain. So this is my little hack. So let's get to it. Step number one, first and foremost, make absolutely sure 
that there is no way your pump is going to turn on. So the time clock is off. You notice the on tab is nowhere near where it is. The other thing that I like to do is I like to go to the override switch, and this has an override switch. It's kind of hidden, but I can flip that down. It looks like a little light switch. I'm going to see if I can get to it. Hope you can see that. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. It's right there. Okay, now I can undo this. Now, usually what I use to undo that is this wonderful tool here. It is a universal pipe union tool or pipe union wrench. And I love using these because I just hook it on here like this and just pull and it breaks my pump basket lid free. Now I'm gonna take my pump lid off, make sure that the O-ring is still in place. See that black O-ring there? Make sure it's not dry or cracked and make sure that it is lubricated. If it's dry, you can lubricate it with some 820 lube or magic lube or even some heavy duty industrial silicon spray. All right, then I pull out my pump basket and this one fits in particularly a particular way. And while I'm at it, I'll take it out and I'll empty it. No need to make you watch that. Now, down here, I'm gonna show you if you can see it. See that hole right there where the end of my toothbrush is? That's where that impeller is gonna be. So what I do is I kind of fit my, my toothbrush in that hole, push it all the way to the end, and then I just kind of start scooping and scraping, kind of like I'm brushing teeth. And as I pull it out, if there's anything in there, it will usually dislodge it or it will catch on the brush itself and that allows me to clear the impeller. Now you notice there's nothing on there, and the reason there's nothing on there is because I'm pretty diligent about keeping that clean, okay? People always wonder, well, how can that happen that a pump impeller gets clogged? See those little holes in this basket? Sometimes very fine debris gets through there, and usually it passes right on through and into the filter, gets caught in the filter, and then it gets flushed out when you backwash it or clean the cartridges or whatever. But sometimes stuff is a little long, it gets lodged into that impeller, and then you notice you get a lack of suction, all right? So if that's the case, besides emptying this and making sure that the suction side of your valves is open, you might wanna check your impeller. But that's pretty much how you do it. Once you've done that, and again, I do a quick empty of my pump basket, all right? I'm gonna seat this back in making sure that it fits in properly. If you notice this little notch right there, this is a Pentair or a PacFab type of filter. Actually, I take that back. Um, it might be an old one. Slides in, make sure it's in place. Take my pump lid. Again, O-ring is in place and I just snug it back down. Now don't over tighten this, just make it snug. And then I turn my pump back on via the override switch and at the time clock, and it will prime, and we are back in business. So folks, there you have it. That is how you clear a clogged impeller that is hard to reach using a toothbrush, all right? I hope that made sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the comment section below this video, or if you'd like, you can email me directly. My email address, as always, will come across the bottom of the screen right here. It is Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny poolschool at gmail.com. I want to thank you once again for watching. I remind you to like, subscribe, and share. And until we meet again, remember, have fun, be safe, and always, always, always watch those kids and elderly people and pets around water. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.